Boop Boop is the sexy, sultry and seductive animated goddess and icon of the golden age of animation. Debuting at the Fleischer Studio in 1930, she provided a bright spark of light for those in the Depression era, pining for the optimistic days of the Jazz Age. As a cartoon series filled with highly promiscuous material, mainly aimed towards an adult audience, Becky never saw enormous stardom, even at the height of her career. And following the introduction of film censorship regulations in 1934, she saw an even further decline in popularity, with her cartoons suddenly watered down. Relegated to sporadic television appearances in later decades and becoming a merchandising symbol and pin-up icon in the 1980s, Becky has struggled to find her place in the limelight ever since. Regardless, in 2020, Betty Boop turns 90 years old, and to celebrate, I will trace her entire evolution from 1930 to now. To do so, we'll look at her entire history, touching on the changes in her design, personality, and stylistic approach, prevalent across a mere century of shorts, television specials, and extended media. In this edition of Cartoon Evolution. <laughs> In the 1910s and 1920s, Max Fleischer and his brother Dave slowly revolutionised the landscape of the animation industry as two of its earliest pioneers in the silent age. Originally producing shorts for the Bray studio, the Fleischers not only pioneered rotoscoping techniques in which live action footage could be traced to paper or cells for more realistic animation, but also established technology in which animation and live action footage could be combined. Their series, Out of the Inkwell, amongst the first popular animated series, debuted in 1918, starring a live-action Max and their first famous character, Coco the Clown, a rotoscoped animation of Dave in a clown suit. By 1921, the Fleischers had opened their own studio, Out of the Inkwell Incorporated, and at the dawning of the sound era, launched the very first sound-on-film animated series, Song Cartoons, in 1924. Each short was introduced by Coco and featured animation set to music, the lyrics of which were shown on screen with a bouncing ball used to encourage and assist audience participation. This technique, established by the Flashes, is still used in sing-along films and karaoke today. Over the course of the mid to late 1920s, numerous legal complications, failed distributor partnerships and bankruptcies led the Flashes to reform their company as Flasher Studios in 1929 and enter into a distribution partnership with Paramount Studios, who were looking to bulk up their offering of sound pictures or talkies with cartoons which were faster and less expensive to produce than live action. For Paramount, the Fleischers revived their song cartoon series as Screen Songs, utilising the studio's catalogue of hit music as their soundtrack, with many shorts acting as de facto publicity advertisements for popular artists. Despite their continued use of Coco for more than a decade in Out of the Inkwell, known as Inkwell Imps since 1927, the character never reached any major level of popularity, starring shorts more or less seen as gimmick or novelty pictures. While Felix the Cat had taken the world by storm in the early 1920s, the emergence of Mickey Mouse in Walt Disney's groundbreaking 1928 synchronised sound cartoon, Steamboat Willie, showed the world a new kind of cartoon superstardom, leaving studios scrambling for new stars to rival him. The overwhelming popularity of Mickey marked a further decrease in popularity for the still silent Coco, who had been up to the same old antics for a decade. Coco was put into retirement, and the entire Inkwell series along with him, with the Fleischers replacing it with Talker Tunes, a brand new sound series. Upon introduction, Paramount spruiked the series as something entirely new and entirely different from anything ever seen and heard before. To fill the gap left by Coco, in the fourth Talker Tunes, Hot Dog, released in 1929, the Flashers debuted a brand new character, later known as Bimbo. The character slowly became a regular staple of the Talker Tunes and eventually their short-lived headliner, even if the Flashers hadn't exactly planned on it initially. As animation historian Michael Barrier put it, at this time, the Flashers all but ridiculed the idea of continuing characters, calling their cartoons poor soil for the strong ground 
growth of character. With the Flashes paying very little attention to continuity or consistency, Bimbo took on a different appearance depending who was animating. He rotated between tall white dog, short white dog, tall black dog with long legs, short black dog with bowed legs, and shorter black dogs with huge round head, before the studio finally conformed with his most recognisable design in 1932. As part of an effort to provide Bimbo with supporting characters, animator Grim Natwick was tasked with developing a female counterpart. Studying art at the Vienna National Academy, Natwick developed incredible skills in realistically drawing and later animating the female form. A skill very few animators had at the time and one which went on to define his career, with animation historian John Kaymaker calling him perhaps the finest animator of the female form and character, certainly a pioneer in this special area. You